My name is the Buffalo Spider. I come from the Kowichasha in central South Dakota, surrounded by South Dakota, along the Missouri River, uh, the Tituan Sichangu Lakota. And I come from the Lakota, Dakota, and Nakota peoples. And our lands went all the way from the, the Great Lakes to the western edge of the Rockies, down into Mexico, up into Canada. And we shared these lands with a lot of people, with a lot of tribes, a lot of relatives. And as my relative was talking about connection, you know, we're, we're all relatives. We all look back in our family trees. They say seven generations ago, we'll, we'll find a relative there somewhere, like a, a snowflake. You know, we're, we're all individual. We're all unique and beautiful, but we all come from the same source. And these lands here, you know, there's been a lot of, a lot of life that's happened here, not only the wahutopa, the wahunupa, the four-legged, the two-legged, the winged, the ones that crawl, the ones that fly in the air, the ones that are watching us, that, that don't touch the ground. So we, we, uh, I wanted to remind you of, of our connection with the land, and I want to thank you for giving us your attention, coming and being and sharing your day with us, sharing some time. Um, First of all, I guess I wanted to talk about our connection with, with this. It represents our Unchimaka, our mother, our earth mother, our heart. And as our, my relative was saying, you know, when, we, when, when you hear these songs, when you hear these, when you hear that, Chantei Pampa, it's going to make your heart rise. It's going to make a connection because this is alive, just like the, the earth we stand on is alive and sacred. These tipis are a representation of the entire universe. They were, they were, they were, uh, and are uh, a female domain. They took care of us. They, uh, a long time ago, they it would have taken eight hides to make a teepee, and you could barely, you know, you had enough, just enough room to stand up if you were traveling. And these would have been considered grandfather lodges, grandmother lodges. With within the teepee, you can see the the example and the representation of the entire universe, the central fire that keeps us warm, that brings life to us, that connects us to our altar, to the altar on the earth, to the altar at the center of the earth, and back out again to the we want, to the, to the we, the sun, which brings us all life and together. Because in reality, we're, you know, we're all connected through energy, through life, through water, through food. And we're, you know, we're all sunshine. We're all stardust. We're all made of this earth. And to this earth we will return, and to the stars our nari, or our spirit, will return. So this is a, a representation, and if you look at the ground at, after a tipi, they have tipi rings. It's a circle. You know, there's no beginning or no end to our life. We were, maybe some of us were here before. Maybe some of us are, are going to get a re-ride and come back again. And these tipis are set up in a way where you can see a vortex on the top, in the center, in the center there, and that, that's conducive to the, the energies of the universe coming from the Wichakbiyate, the star people, and coming down, and each, each pole has a story, has a representation of, of the rib of a buffalo. Ihani, a medicine lodge, a grandfather lodge, would have used 28 poles, the same amount in, in the, the ribs of a, a female buffalo. A long time ago, it, it wasn't an honor to take a life, it was an honor to count ku, they say, you know, you go and you touch them. And, and there was more honor in that. That's how you earned a feather. That's how you earned power, respect amongst your people. So with that, I'm going to share these, share these songs. And lila pilama palo, ikdomi tatankalemi lo hohe.
I ask you to think of this, put it in your mind as you go through this, that you'll probably feel a spiritual connection. Embrace that. Embrace and hold that and believe in that tomorrow of healing. Hmm? So two, I'd like to say, I challenge you, I ask you to know the water, word for water in your language, in your language. So like as I shared with you, the Cheyenne way of saying water is mup, and other people can share theirs too. But I ask for healing for all, for all of us. I ask for safe travels, for we are very pitiful people. I ask that in the name of Niyash. My people, as Shoshone people, we believe this land created us. I belong here. I belong to this land. It's the reason I chose to be an indigenous anthropologist. I'm a rare bird. I'm a rare breed. I'm a four-field anthropologist, sociocultural, linguistics, biophysical, and archaeology. My philosophy dictates, demands, I look at my work as an indigenous woman through all four lens, as a profession, as a discipline. And I'm very proud to be a professor, a teacher of what we refer to as indigenous research methodologies and methods. It's looking through our lens as indigenous people at the work of being human in relationship to land, to what's here. Culture is socially constructed. Those trees tell me who I am. This water tells me who I should be and must be. In 2021, I was invited to a gathering to think about a partnership and some ideas with the National Park Service and Yellowstone National Park. What derived out of that has been Yellowstone Revealed, not just restoring our presence from the history that some of you may know. We were removed, but we never left. So Yellowstone Revealed is a concept of sharing with you our continuous presence. 
It became a movement. It has become our way of sharing with you who we are from our perspectives. And in partnership, we are all educators. I thank you for being here, seeing us, hearing us. We hope to learn from you. We hope that what we share with you, you will carry. Help us tell the world who we are from our voice. Ho -e ho. Thank you. When I uh, was approached to do this, this work, I wanted to display a, a different side of the story that's not normally shown. And that's why I, I got involved in American Indian Studies several years ago to tell that story of the of, of the this relationship between uh, Europeans and U.S. government and, and, and Indian people, this complicated uh, relationship that we have. And when I talk about, as you see, you heard about my the painting titles. Uh, when I talk about this, no one, and it's the this definition of no one and when Indian people were first met by Europeans, there was always this uh, desire to define us as low, savage, uh, less than a human being. And we went into boarding schools. Again, that same concept was, was drilled into our heads to be nobody. And we could only go so far in society, and that would be it. And we would never rise to a level as, as uh, civilized, a civilized culture would be. So that's kind of the story that, that my work takes into account. So the, uh, when we became no one, that creation story on the outside, um, that's, what, that's what that one's about. And inside you'll see the snippets and the stories of, uh, of our existence. And when I, when I say when we used to be, I'm talking about how we used to live fluently in our language, in our ceremonies, in our ways of behavior, how we treated each other versus, versus the ways that were drilled into us and, and a, into a world that, that we, had to be, we had to be forced to live in. And maybe some of us forgot who we were, who we are, but uh, I, you know, I tend to be a little bit uh, sarcastic or uh, uh, a little bit dark in, in my work but I still have this hope, which is why in my own person, in my own life, I chose to be a, a tribal college educator. And, and today I'm, I'm still promoting that our indigenous life ways as, as the president of Ani Nakota College, which I think are institutions that really try to build and mesh these two worldviews together so that we can become successful. So again, thank you all for being here. I see old friends and family and and I, I hope you guys all have a good time what is a human what is a man today and especially what is a man who has culture assigned to them who grows up within a, a living breathing people right a cultural group like say the Absalga people and so what I'm thinking about with this teepee is the men the individuals the humans and I've removed all forms of culture that they had in the original images. So these images are, are images from photographers like uh, Throssel, and uh, you might, may have heard of uh, Edward Sheriff Curtis, etc. And I've removed their regalia to show you that we are just humans. We should not be romanticized or generalized or placed in the boxes because, you know, once you start grouping too much then you leave a little humanness behind and, and and you move on and so really to me it's 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 empowering to to see these works as like my my relative uh, Michael Spears said teepees are a representation of the earth of our world the representation of our dimension and we'll get to dimension when we get to the mesh teepee but it's powerful for me to powerful for me to be able to just speak here with my work because when I was a I was about a 13 my grandfather he was moving on to the next world he's moving on to the other side camp and he said I want to give you my right to speak 
And in our way, you're supposed to have the right to speak because it's a responsibility. Not everybody should have the right to speak in a lot of ways in our culture because we assign speakers who are upstanding in our community, who are representative of our overall values. And uh, once he gave me that, I thought about how I could use that for my life as in thinking about who I was as a person, as, a, as, a, as an individual. And I started making artwork. And I've, I've just continued doing that, making art and speaking with my art instead of, as you can tell, I'm not the best speaker, but I'm working on it. And so what I want to really represent is this is the male teepee. And there's a female teepee. And to, to show that we have diversity and there's two parts to, to our human existence and everybody in between this sort of spectrum is here represented so this next teepee the blue teepee is representative of the women the water and in a lot of ways it's a collaborative uh, artwork that I did with the the elements and so I painted the teepee and I let the rain be the painter I let the rain be the artist and so if you come around to the back when there's a chance you can see that the the rain has has left its impression in its own way and I don't I don't know if I've I've ever seen any sort of collaborative artwork with the, with the land or nature but this is my take to represent the water because what is our world without water what is this rock? You know, who are any of us without water, right? Uh, unless the stars bless us with more water, you know, this is all we have. And so why not, instead of treating water like a resource, you know, like numbers on a paper or in a computer, I think we should treat it with respect, like a being. Because if, if you respect a being, if you respect a person in a lot of ways, in the right way, then that person grows in a beautiful in a beautiful direction so uh, this is a this is the teepee and on the front of the teepee we have two handprints one from uh, Marcia Small her name is a uh, blue teepee woman she's Northern Cheyenne and she's a water keeper and a protector and the other handprint is from Ren Freeman who's a uh, Eastern Shoshone you guys uh, heard her speak and she's from the uh, the yellow uh, yellow Bing clan and she's also a, a water woman, a keeper of the water. And so I was sort of thinking that who am I as a man to make something specifically for women without the input of women, especially the ones who keep the water. And so this is what I'm thinking about here is to represent the water and the land and the life that the land and the water carry, right? And so this is, this is my, my introduction in thinking about what it means to be an artist today, thinking about what it means to be an artist who happens to be indigenous because in a lot of ways, artists, we share our stories, right? And where we are now at basically the, the confluence of the fire hole and the Gibbon rivers leading it up to the Madison, it's in, important to me to think about convergence and confluence. Where do we come together as people? How can we meet and, and see each other on the same plane? Because today, we're all so disconnected because we're so much more connected than we've ever been in our history. How do we get to level ground and see each other and respect each other just as we should the land, just as we should water, just as we should the celestials, just as we should our future? How do we do this? And so it's, I don't really have any real answers. These are all just questions and thoughts and suppositions.